Now is the special time, do the adorable kids who can't go to school, think about extra classes and curriculum. Don't regret it, today Harry will introduce to you a spectacular movie. It is a horrifying story, extracurricular activities. It all began with a car accident. The Wallace couple were traveling, their off-road vehicle fell to the mountainside. They died instantly, because there was no unusual trace at the scene, the police concluded that it was an accident. The bad news spread, the neighbors fussed. You see, they have died already. Their two children are too young to inherit such a fortune. How can they live like that? This is horrible, but when the police officer Cliff saw their two children Becky and Ben crying and suffering, he thought that things were not that simple. The two children were a bit overreacting. He didn't have enough time to interrogate the children because there was another case. A millionaire Mr. Molnick drowned in his private pool. According to his son, on the night of the accident, the whole family was having a party. The millionaire was so excited that he got drunk. But strangely, he had a serious cold recently and used cephalosporin. But virtually no one knew, cephalosporin and alcohol caused instant death. Reckless as he was, he shouldn't have made such a mistake. After asking people who were at the scene, a suspicious young man caught Cliff's attention. The young man wearing a blue shirt was not only an excellent student at school, but he was also polite and modest. Every remark that the teachers gave him was A+. Plus. Every classmate called him, Brother Reagan. Theoretically, those excellent teenagers couldn't have anything to do with the murder. But Cliff was meticulous. He found out this boy definitely had close relationships with the families in two cases. Moreover Reagan only knew studying, and suddenly joined some party, which was somewhat unusual. More importantly, Reagan said he didn't have a phone. It was 2020, without a phone how could he watch Harry's video? His answers definitely had problems. Cliff's deduction might sound illogical but he was unexpectedly right. The excellent students in the teacher's eyes, actually, did some illegal trades. Everything was Reagan's idea, the teenagers who were the victim's family members were the culprits behind all those things. The boy was fed up with his parents' strict regulations and asked for Reagan's help. And Reagan used his intelligence to fake every accident from this one to another. Until the children inherited the fortune, he could earn a lot of money. This extracurricular activity seemed risky, but the money was worth it. The school had more than 2,000 students which meant there were more than 4,000 parents. According to the stats, there were some retarded kids. Becky and Ben held the grudge because Mr. and Mrs. Wallace didn't take care of the family. And the millionaire's son was fed up with his father being greedy and lustful. In the family, if it wasn't the children who were naughty, it would be parents who were mischievous. Reagan found out the rules, and asked Becky and Bento to advertise by spreading rumors. This method was efficient. A new guest soon came. Braid said, her parents were Greek food critics, they always looked for strange cuisines, they spent much money, the chemical factories polluted the environment seriously. It was disgusting. Reagan accepted the mission without asking much. In the dark, he broke into Braid's house and mixed the food with poisonous mushrooms. Everything followed the plan, this time television broadcast the news, Braid's parents died of food poisoning. After many times, Cliff suspected Reagan to be the serial killer. He recalled that the night before the murder occurred, he saw Reagan and Braid in the audience area in the stadium. They must have talked about something bad. Cliff approached Reagan under the pretense of investigating. At that time he saw an encyclopedia on his desk. The marked page is about the poisonous mushroom that killed Braid's parents. Cliff took Reagan to the police station. This act alarmed his boss. I've seen this kid grow up, every year he gets awarded as a brilliant student, and you say he is a serial killer. Are you out of your mind? Take him home now. Miss Peterson's criticism didn't clear Cliff's suspicion. He secretly spied on Reagan and found out that he recently got on well with Mary his classmate and he eavesdropped on Mary asking for his help. His sense told him that they were organizing another conspiracy to commit another crime. At the same time, Reagan had another deal. His customer was the chubby boy. After his parents' divorce, along with his seven-year-old sister, he lived with his mother. Unpleasantly, his mother didn't care about her children, she just spent time with her boyfriend James. They wasted the whole day in the car investigating the elasticity of the coil spring. They almost quit eating and sleeping. The worst thing was that, James was a womanizer. The chubby boy didn't want his younger sister to grow up in such a family, so he asked Reagan to get rid of the rotten couple. Reagan agreed with the deal. But troubles came. In her fancy car, Becky arrogantly said, we won't pay you money. We have paid enough price for that. After our parents died, every night has been a sleepless night. Do you know how much we have suffered? Hearing this, Reagan smirked. The contract states clearly that, when everything has been done, the insurance money will be paid. Now you are going back on your word, Ben said, hey, isn't it me who has introduced to you all of your deals? Stop extorting money from me, or else we will tell Cliff. Unexpectedly, Reagan had soon anticipated this and recorded the conversation of the customer that hired him to murder. The stupid one couldn't compete with those who excelled in everything. Seeing the voice recording pen, Ben didn't know how to react. Reagan had just barely dealt with two retards when he was caught by Cliff. Have they paid you the rest of the money? Stop pretending, I've known it all. Reagan quickly pulled out the spy pen and said. To be honest, I feel guilty. 
I know that downloading music without paying for it is illegal, but I don't intend to sell it. I just want to share it with my friends. Cliff just paid attention to his saying, not his pen recorder. He didn't know that what he just held in his hand was the evidence for the murder that he was looking for. Cliff let the chance slip away, and continued observing and searching for information secretly. Not long after, his hard work paid off, he eavesdropped on a strange conversation. Money isn't a problem, just get rid of my father and my stepmother, so that I can play whenever I want. Okay, believe in me, I got this. On Saturday, at Magiartan Park, I will arrange everything. Hearing those words, Cliff quickly returned to the headquarter to report to his boss. He then played the record of a horrifying conversation for her. The evidence was clear, the boss couldn't defend the boy anymore. She ordered an ambush to catch both the criminal and the proof. But when they waited for the criminal at the park, they encountered a completely different scene. Mary didn't hire the murderer, she asked Reagan to shoot advertising photos for the school. Seeing that situation, Cliff was so angry that he shouted, It is a trap, a trap. Now no one believes me. Cliff was fired by the headquarter. As a man, he couldn't accept it, he used alcohol to distract him from the sadness and used drugs to support himself spiritually. At the same time, the big tree in front of the chubby boy's house fell down. As a result, the couple inside the car were crushed into a piece of meat. Provided that there was a storm that night, the police concluded that their death was due to a natural disaster. But Cliff knew that it was Reagan's doing. He looked for Mary and asked her for help. Mary was a knowledgeable girl, so she reluctantly agreed with him. Fine, let me find the evidence. After that, Mary visited Reagan's house. Under the pretense of looking around the house, she searched for proof everywhere, she stole the pen recorder and gave it to Cliff. This time, he listened carefully to the content in the recorder. He was sure that there was no mistake, this time Reagan couldn't escape. He counter-attacked and found Reagan to confront him. But when he just got inside the house, he saw Reagan calling the police. Please help, Cliff suddenly breaks into my house with a gun. At that time Cliff hung up the phone. Tell me the truth, you've killed many people, and still want to stay above the law. But Reagan didn't change his expression. No, I'm saving them. Think, if Ben's parents hadn't exceeded the speed limits, why wouldn't the break have had any effect? Mulnick was having a cold and drinking, if he hadn't done it, he wouldn't have died. Even the couple who were in favor of strange taste was rotten to their bone. Apart from the chubby guy's mother who was killed by me, everyone else was dead on their own. Cliff however was a police officer, he pulled out the pen recorder and said, I have the witness, the record, all those things can prove your crime. The man who was on cloud 9 forgot that, he had been sacked previously, breaking into a citizen's house with a gun could be enough to charge him. Not long after, the sound of the police transmitted from outside. Cliff, your wife reported to the police about your drinking and using drugs. Calm down, don't do stupid things. He is just a kid. Not waiting for his explanation, the police officer triggered the gun with shaking hands the bullet went right through Cliff's heart. Cliff collapsed. Three days after, at Cliff's funeral, the police announced that, Cliff's drinking and using a drug had led to a loss of control over his behaviors, he threatened an excellent student. Everyone was feeling sympathetic, but no one minded, Cliff's son was complaining with Reagan. This took too long, Reagan whispered, I've told you, this needs time. Now as you want, your dad is dead. The truth was clear, Cliff's death apparently wasn't an accident, but it was a plan of Reagan. Cliff's wife and son were not happy with his alcohol addiction and asked Reagan to kill him for them. Even Mary's help was planned in the conspiracy. The poor girl who was hurt by her stepmother agreed with Reagan's thought, and soon expressed her loyalty to him. From now on, they cooperated and continued to make up the accidents. After watching the movie Extracurricular Activities, Harry's spine was cold. Honestly, this movie is creative, but its perspective is absolutely wrong. Those naughty kids obviously didn't know what crime they had committed. So, to the adorable kids who are watching the video, like, comment, and follow. Don't forget it, but most importantly, the exercises of extra classes in the winter must be done. Because if you do something wrong, you have to pay the price.